Yeah, this tenor is really good. <laughs> yeah. It plays really well. Hasn't done any, you know, no, no work done on it, and it does, you know. Now, yeah. can you can you tell a a good Mark VI from a bad Mark VI? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's within, it? Well, within a few what, notes. what the huh? Within What's the difference? Notes. The tone or uh, it's not so much the tone. It's more for me the feel. Oh yeah. Um, and there will be like a ring in the sound. You'll hear like an overtone. Oh yeah. So like when I play this. <laughs> No, I can't. There's, there's some overtones. I'm a hard of hearing, too. Yeah, time I was in the Happy Days string band and another saxophone player was in a row ahead of me uh -huh. and he says that's a Mark VI isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I said yeah. He says it has a sound. Yeah they sound it's they Mark do VI have a sound. Sound, their own sound. Yeah and this is a particularly good one. I like it. It's very vibrant. It's like easy free blowing but it stays. Well you straight. make it sound good too. It feels good and I don't think this one needs an overhaul. No? I think if you just had it worked on it would be really good because the pads, you could tell because the pads are squishy still, and they're they're a brighter color. Okay. The, those pads are like black. Well, the the low the low pads are bright. Oh, but, but the up. But the low pads are squishy oh, okay. on that one. Okay. They don't have like it should be like you're pinching your skin. Okay. You know they should feel supple. And they were tight. And yeah. they were those were wrinkled. Kind of oh, okay. a little bit. Okay. This one, I think, if you just had it worked on, it would be... There's like a little clicking, things like that, but... <laughs> Someplace here, I have a Chinese copy of that. You want to try it? Oh, God. I'll try it. Alright. Oh, man. <laughs> this is great. So that's an oldie, right? This is about 1930. Really? 1929. It's got a replacement here. But that's the only thing wrong with it. Oh, man. Huh. This is a great horn, Ken. This is really great. <laughs> I like this a lot. Those horns have never been played that well. 
since you touched it, man. You got you make it sound good. <laughs> Amazing the way you play. You know, this is this is my sort of a saxophone. Yeah. I love this. Yeah, you sound like Hodges swinging, swinging the note. been played in a long time. It plays like it was played yesterday. Wow. Wow. Ugh. Well, you sure make it sound good. It's... This is a good one, Ken. See, now, if you were here in February, you'd probably be going home with that. Yeah. When you had the money. <laughs> I, know, I know. But then, if you spent all this money, you'd be screwed now. I would be very screwed. <laughs> Might as well play the Mark VI yeah. alto while we're at it. guys can play a note and go, you know what, it's not quite in tune. How the heck do you do well, that? Well, you get used to it. You know, if you're playing all the time, you know, you kind of get you used to Do you have perfect to tone? No, well, you just understand, oh, this feels a little too loose or it feels a little too tight. Oh. Like if it's too tight, you're probably a little flat. If it's too loose, you're probably a little sharp. I mean, they play that way. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And also, like, you can feel like if the C sharp, I use this middle C sharp to um, to tune a lot because if it's too sharp, 
the rest of the horn is going to be way sharp. Oh, okay. And if it's just in tune or a little flat, then everything's going to be okay. Cool. Stuck, huh? G sharp key. So you, you can use Johnson baby powder? No, no, no you can't. No, that's all I wonder. Because you shouldn't breathe that in. Yeah. <laughs> play the C melody just okay. for the heck of it. Now those were, the C melodies are for people that just, like hobbyists more, right? Yeah, they, they were released in the 20s. Yeah, they really need their own mouthpiece. <laughs> Piece in there? You had a couple, but I don't want to. But I don't think I had the right one. I don't know if I had the right one yeah, or not. I don't think so. Is there I is there a right one for that? The Rico, these are just tenor mouthpieces. There's the one that came with it, which isn't in there. Okay. And then there's a, Morgan makes one, Morgan mouthpieces. They yeah. make a, a one for this. <laughs> So, so what, would be, what would be the difference if you had the right mouthpiece? What would it be the difference? Okay. It would be a little more centered, a little more in tune. Okay. Because it's not really right for an alto mouthpiece, and it's not really right for a tenor mouthpiece. Okay, so it's an in between. Yeah. <laughs> My son has it. It's a curved soprano. Yeah, those are great too. And I'm gonna probably get that back because I like playing that. Those are fun. Kind of. I've only played one curved soprano, it's, but it's a, a newer one, a Yonaga. And you know what? I don't remember what brand it was, but I kind of thought it might have been a Con. If it was old, it's old. probably it was old. It could be Con. It could be a Boucher. It could be a King. Martin. It wasn't all. a King. I would have known that. Well, if you Could have been a Boucher, but it, it was re very old, I remember. Did it have, do you remember if it had the nail file on the G-sharp key or no? No, I don't remember. Because that's one Oh, way you know what? Tell. I think it did. What would that mean? It's a con. Con. Yeah, they were the ones that had that. Cool. Can I play that con alto again? Sure. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> Mm. You like that? Yeah, 
like that horn. It speaks to me. Adjustment capabilities that a Mark VI has, right? No, no, and the, that's why. And they're funny. these are like you bend them and that they they stay. You bend them or you you put uh, corks, different size corks to adjust yeah. the key heights. So like in the back here, you'd have to put different adjustment materials down here okay. instead of having screws like a Mark VI. You have to put corks okay. in between this rod and these pieces. So it's a little funkier. And also ergonomically, they're a little tougher to get around on than a Mark VI. Yeah. Um, and you know, I, I mean, who was it? Who was the famous alto player that he had his horn? Mo most of it was all soldered, and you know, famous alto player. The guy, his. To me, his notori mm -hmm. uh, notor fame would be you to go up and down the scales faster than anybody. Charlie Parker? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, his, his horn was redone with soldering and, and he, blowtorch. And he had so many different horns, too, because he was oh. always pawning them. Oh, really? Drugs. Oh, okay. So it's like, this is coming home. Let me ask you something. Would you like to borrow that horn? No, I shouldn't. I shouldn't. My wife would really kill me. No, you're not going to really pay shouldn't. for it. You just want to borrow I, it. I shouldn't borrow it. Because she'll say, uh-oh, he's going to buy that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. She'll throw me out. So <laughs> until I'm, like, back working again. That's going to be a while. Well, That's going to be yeah. a while. I know. I, I, I can't bring anything home because she really would kick me out. But you're welcome to, you know, take it along and play it and enjoy it. Oh, it is great. Because it's going to be sitting it's here. It's so solid, too. It's going to be sitting here, you know. Yeah, it's heavy. Yeah. Well, I, I'll come back at some point and figure it out. You could tell it was played, too, because the pearls are worn down a little bit. Okay. You can see on the edge it's dipped a little bit. That's how you know it's a good one. Anything that if the looks... Per if the pearls are down a little bit. It's been played a lot. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're talking about an instrument that's almost 100 years old. Yeah, you're right. I mean, this is 1930 or 1929. Yeah. So that's yeah. only 11, it's 90 years old. Yeah. It's my grandfather's age. He's 91. Yeah. Yeah. These are great. And these are some of my favorite horns, too. These transitional ones. These these, this comes in between the Chewberry and the, the Con 6M. So it, it had just a different raised E here. So now, the Chewberry what, has what's with the Chewberry? They, they just decided to make a horn and name it after the famous musician? They never or named, he designed it? They never named it they never? after him. It's, oh. it's actually called a Con New Wonder Series 2. But that's, that's what Chewberry the, played? But Chewberry played a horn like this. He didn't play a, a Chewberry. Oh, he didn't? No. He played a New Wonder. A well, why did they name it Chewberry? It's the dumbest name. The con company didn't name it that. Players nicknamed it. That. Oh, okay. Just like the Super Balanced Action. Yeah. Its real name is the Super Action. Oh. 
But people called it the super, super balanced, balanced action, action because it came after the balanced action. Yeah. But its its official name is the super it's, action. Super, they're they're pretty decent horns. Yeah, that's my alto is is a super balanced. It's really great. Yeah. My one of my two altos. Oh, that's great. And they're just so pretty too. Yeah. These cons from yeah. that period, they're so pretty. Yeah, I think the soprano was a con. I really do. Because it, as you say, it had that rough, uh, yeah. that one key that was like sandpaper. Yeah, the nail file. Yeah. yeah those nail cool. file, yeah. My Barry has that, and my tenor, and that alto there, and your C melody. That denoted the New Wonder Series 2. Because the New Wonder Series 1, which was made up until like 1925, had a rounded G sharp key. It was a little different. You want to take the soloist with you? I'm not going to play it. I'm just going to sit here. If you say, I'll play it once in a while, then I'll... You know. I would play it, but... I would... I'm not going to sell it. I'm going to give it to you. Will you take it? I'll, I'll, yes. Okay. By the way, do you have a, a computer?